All right, man, peace. So in the aftermath of the mass school shooting that occurred at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School on quote-unquote Valentine's Day, a.k.a. the Lupercalia, which demands a blood sacrifice to the god Pan, the CBS Morning News had a very interesting segment in which they interviewed two of the figureheads of the fledgling hashtag never again movement that being mr david hogg and miss emma gonzalez who both come under scrutiny due to them being at being basically the tip of the spear in the new attack against the nra so anyway they're going to talk about it and i'm going to chime in as many as half a million people are preparing to march in washington this weekend to fight for stricter gun control many of them will be high school students. The event follows a nationwide walkout last week inspired by the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Students at about 3,000 schools protested gun violence since the deaths of 17 people at Stoneman Douglas High School last month. Survivors have mobilized the Never Again movement. Their goal is to overcome political obstacles in an effort to influence gun legislation. Uh Brothers, please understand something, and I've mentioned this before. When you see the term movement, involved in something 99% of the time it's Marxist which means 99% of the time it's Luciferian what do I mean by Luciferian it means that it has a certain agenda behind it to help move along what they call the great work which is to try to reinvigorate to bring to fruition the apostasy that was started in the ancient world by Cush and Nimrod look at when you look at how many of these high school students are being mobilized they don't really understand what they're doing they just want to be a part of something which makes them such easy pawns and such easy targets because we're living in the age of the hashtag everything has to have a hashtag in front of it that basically is like what authorizes something once you put a hashtag in front of something then it officially becomes recognizable it's something that the media can use to push forth towards the viewer to intrinsically tell the viewer look this is real because it has a hashtag in front of it and people are being galvanized by it what this movement really reminds me of is someone who's about to be shot and they grab a child or a baby and hold the baby up in front of them to try to get some type of sympathy from the shooter this is an updated form of attack against the quote unquote Second Amendment. What they truly want to do is disarm the citizens of the United States in case they have to declare martial law so that they don't have to worry about too much resistance. And many of these high school students, they don't really know what they're being used for. They're just acting as interference. I'm going to rewind it back a little bit because I just want to go through some of the scenes that they chose to show. All right, so now I rewound it back. Once again, brothers, like I always tell you, please pay attention to who they choose to highlight. As you can see in the box up top where it says Chicago, Illinois, they're showing basically all females. You will notice if you pay very close attention that the figures that they choose to exalt in all of these movements are almost always going to be homosexuals, lesbians, and women. Follows a nationwide walkout last week inspired by the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Students at about 3,000 schools protested gun violence. Since it now look on the right hand side for Philadelphia, they have the symbol of the heart. Now we know conventionally in this modern day society, the heart is associated with what? Love. But the heart is truly the symbol of Heru in his reincarnation as Harpo or Harpocrates, which just means Horus the child. Once again, that's why in the film, Black Panther, he utilized the heart-shaped herb. Because as I told you guys in that video, the Black Panther is supposed to represent the pharaohs of Kemet. He's supposed to represent Heru being born over and over and over again. Please understand that the, the priests of Asar always wore the leopard skin cloak. Because that was supposed to be an allusion to him being hidden all of the true motives behind these movements are always hidden. It's what's known as the Hegelian dialectic. You have to create a controlled opposition. Many of these high school students are unwitting pawns. Am I one of these people who's going to make a video talking about this person is a crisis actor and that person is a crisis actor? No. Many of the people who want to claim everything is a hoax and everyone is a crisis actor, 
to be quite frank with you, they're just looking for attention. Are there crisis actors? Are there hoaxes out there that occur? Absolutely. But is everything a hoax and a crisis actor being utilized to cause confusion? No. Now, in regards to what I think about Mr. David Hogg, I will, I will expound on that a little later in the video. But you have to understand something. You can be a winning pawn or an unwitting pawn. Everyone does not have to be in the know. And once again, do not sleep on the aspect of what they call a Manchurian candidate, a sleeper agent. Someone who's under a certain form of mind control. That's what I mean when I say everyone is not a winning pawn. That's what Mr. Nicholas Cruz was, by the way. He's what's known as a Manchurian candidate. But I'll be dealing with that aspect in another video. Since the deaths of 17 people at Stoneland Douglas High School last month, survivors have mobilized the Never Again movement. Their goal is to overcome political obstacles in an effort to influence gun legislation. Yes, they're trying to influence gun legislation. In other words, most of their other tactics haven't worked. So they're saying, you know what? Teenagers are known for being persistent and annoying. Let's use them. Let's use them. Let's use the teenagers. They love attention. They're persistent. They're annoying. They want their lives to mean something. They're at that phase. You know, the last time that they did something like this was when the CIA sanctioned the counterculture era in which the CIA decided that they were going to test out the effects of hallucinogenic drugs on the masses, particularly through young people, by making the use of LSD and peyote and PCP and angel dust more acceptable by promoting it through the rock groups, who were all MK Ultra assets, all monarch butterflies. You'll notice the same people who grew up in that era and were into the flower power and give peace a chance, they all grew up and they understood society on a more macrocosmic level and they conformed. And that is what is going to happen with many of these young children as well. They see life from a very idealistic perspective. They think that things should be changed just because of their feelings. And that is what makes them so useful to run interference, to try to shame many of the upper bureaucrats and politicians into changing laws and trying to demonize the quote unquote NRA. Brothers, you have to understand what this is really about. In middle America, you have millions of Caucasians who would rather die than give up their machine guns. Because they wake up every day, they listen to Alex Jones, they feel their world crumbling around them. Every time they turn on the, t the television, <laughs> they see a black man or a black woman or a Hispanic man or a Hispanic woman, and they feel like they're losing their country. They believe that their government is against them and they hold on to their automatic weapon and they say to themselves, one day the government is going to declare martial law. They're going to try to take away our weapons and we're not going out without a fight. That's what this is really about. And the government understands that if they were to try to confiscate the automatic weapons of most or many of the Caucasians that live in middle America, it would result in civil war. OK, so they have to create a pretext to justify demonizing people who own machine guns because the Second Amendment was created exactly for the U.S. citizens to be able to defend themselves in case their government turned upon them. It really wasn't created so people could just protect themselves in their homes. Among the most vocal students are seniors Emma Gonzalez and David Hogg. Both were featured last night on 60 Minutes, and they join us again at the table. Now, isn't it interesting that almost every member of the hashtag Never Again movement is involved in theater or drama or acting? I personally don't trust anyone that is involved in acting because what they are are professional liars. I've touched on this on this channel before. That's all an actor is. It's really someone who conjures demons into themselves so that they can be someone else. Please understand that the god of the theater is Pan and also Bacchus. Those are the gods of the theater. Also pay attention in the background right over the head of Mr. David Hogg on the sink there are sunflowers. Do I believe that they were strategically placed there? Possibly. The sunflower is a symbol for Shiva, also for Heru, because 
They are the sun gods. Well, Shiva is the destroyer god. That's just a, that's, that is just a pseudonym for Saturn or Nimrod. Table. Good morning. Join us for the first time at the table. We are also looking forward to meeting you both. Hello. Good morning. Because everyone has been praising you for your poise and your intelligence and, and your focus on this. Do, have you all had a chance to really reflect and... And, and really understand what you all are doing and what it means to the country. Do you think about that, Emma? Let me say this before she answers. Of course, they're going to say that, yes, they've had a chance to reflect and they can't believe what they're caught up in. Let me say this. It is very clear that most of those kids, they're on a car going downhill and they couldn't get out if they wanted to. You're not going to hear the real story in regards to this quote-unquote movement until after the fact. And some of them may state that they were guided by an unseen hand in the background. You don't get enough money to lead protests unless you have backers. They may state overtly that they have denied any sponsor that wanted to take control of their movement. But you have to understand that there are many people who love what they're doing because they, they understand what it's truly about. And once again, isn't it interesting that the leadership of the Never Again movement all came out of the drama class. One would think that maybe the most popular person in school or the school president would be leading it. But they're all, they're all from the drama class. Isn't that interesting? And I'm not here to call them crisis actors and all that other stuff. Everyone does not have to be a crisis actor. In regards to Mr. David Hogg, much has been made of the fact that his father is in the FBI. Do I believe that He's a so-called crisis actor. No, I don't. I think that he was strategically planted there with an understanding that he was going to come and dear the situation once their sleeperous agent, their maturing candidate, Nicholas Cruz, actionized what they wanted him to actionize. Nicholas Cruz is on record as stating that he heard voices within his head that told him not only what to do, but how to do it. But I'll be covering that in another video. Interestingly enough, they don't report that on the mainstream news. But in regards to Mr. David Hogg, it's very clear that he has media training. I know that they claim that he's someone who wants to be in the media, but the way in which he represents himself is not something that you would normally see at a high school level of media. He seems to have professional training in how he represents himself. I personally do, like a lot. I think about like, in the future, this is going to happen. Like, what we're fighting for will happen because we're fighting so strongly for it. And we expect it to happen now. And with those expectations, we're going to vote out the people who aren't acting. They would You're not even going to have to vote them out. They're just going to use you as the mechanism that is used to strip people of their right to bear arms, that being machine guns. Why is that important? Because as I've already stated, in case they want to declare martial law, and they have to inhabit people's cities, they don't have to worry about any type of militia in middle America trying to fight them back. But that's not going to help them because those Caucasians in middle America, they see through a lot of the hijinks, a lot of the antics, a lot of the machinations of the higher powers. And they're not going to give up their guns without a fight. If you try to, <laughs> if you try to abduct their weapons, it will be a civil war in America. All right, brother. So that's really what this is about. And they're using a lot of these young kids to, to run interference. They've been calling you two superheroes. They've been calling your group superheroes. Do you feel that? I don't think we're superheroes. I think we're what every American should be. We're people that are standing up and becoming politically active in our democracy in our own way. And I, I think what we saw last week with that walkout is students were walking out of school, but now they're going to walk into the polls when they're able to vote, and they're going to vote these people out of office. Is, yeah. that, is that where uh, it, it next has to go, though, Emma? Because nothing right now in response to the shooting, what's your response been about what's happened legislatively in Florida and then also at the national level? Um, now, before she speaks, isn't it interesting that right now we're the day before the spring equinox and another quote-unquote school shooting was, I won't say staged, but occurred in Maryland to help build up some juice for this event that is coming this Saturday. As I tell you, brothers, always watch for the equinoxes, for the solstices, for certain high holy days, as they would call it on the Wiccan calendar, because that is when they stage 
or execute, let me specify execute, I won't say stage, execute many of these events. And I won't say that, that they're not real because they're certainly real to the people who die in them. Uh, many people are fond of saying that these are hoaxes. No, they're not hoaxes. Their God demands real blood, not fake blood. Okay? Their God Baal or Heru, Apollo, Asar. Their God demands real blood, not fake blood. One thing has happened in Florida, and it was positive. We got a bill signed, and that was good. That's not going to stop there, though, because it's, you know, it's just the beginning. It's, it was barely anything. It's, it was important, but as Jackie said in 60 Minutes, it would not have stopped what had happened at our school. We're fighting for that change. I think with Now, notice how she always looks to him whenever she goes on one of her little spiels. I'm not saying that she's dumb or anything like that. She is someone who enjoys attention. That's very clear. It's clear by her appearance, um, by the cult of personality that she's created, by how she depicts herself with her haircut, etc. Her declaration that she is a quote-unquote bisexual, a.k.a. pansexual. That's why I tell you, brothers, always watch who they choose to make the forefront or the leadership in these movements. They will almost unerringly be pansexuals. Unerringly. Why is that? Because these movements are Marxist. Marxism is Luciferianism. Read up on Stalin and Lenin and many of the early Bolshevik leaders. They were pedophiles and, and homosexuals, right? Allegedly, allegedly. But read up on them. There's information like that out there about them. But when you see that term movement, 99% of the time, it is Marxist, a.k.a. Luciferian, a.k.a. to assist in making sure that the global government uh, is able to run with impunity for perpetuity. I think what's important to realize with that law, too, is there are a lot of loopholes in it. You can be 18 and buy a gun privately still under that law. And a lot of gun purchases are purchased that way. And they, it doesn't take care of the gun show loophole. It doesn't require a universal background check that has 97% support among constituents. It doesn't cover so many basic things that have widespread support on both sides of the aisle. And that's the part that I hate most about it. You know Let me say this very quickly. Um, this is what's known as a red herring. Uh, they're saying that they want to to stop the ability of an 18-year-old to purchase a machine gun. Well, the ability to purchase a machine gun is not why the Parkland shooting occurred or why the Marjorie Stoneman shooting occurred. Let me specify. That occurred because that person, Nicholas Cruz, he was armed by a certain entity that needed to utilize him. You don't work at the job that he was working and be able to build up an armory like that. There's no way in the world that he was able to do what he did without some form of assistance or training or being armed. There's no way in the world. Beyond that, even if they were to change the gun laws to make it legal only for people 21 and above to purchase any form of, of gun or artillery, if someone who's 17 or 16 has a mental issue and they decide that they want to shoot up their school, all they have to do is steal the gun. So that's how you know that they're trying to demonize legal gun owners for an issue that's really not about people who legally arm themselves. It's about people who, number one, have some type of mental issue and also are potentially able to acquire their artillery by some form of skullduggery or by a nefarious means. But yes, their target is definitely the legal gun owners, but they're trying to couch it in, oh, we never want this to happen again in a school. Well, black kids have been getting shot for the last 50, 60 years. Nobody has cared. That's why they have to make the face of this a Caucasian boy and a female that is sexually nebulous. You know, uh, one thing that stood out from your interview with 60 Minutes was you called yourself the, the mass shooting generation. And, you know, you think about the post 9-11 generation, right? Uh, you really put into context what you as students experience how has that impacted you even before uh, that that deadly shooting how has that impacted you on a day-to-day -day basis I, I think on a day-to-day -day basis the fact that we even have to talk about having active shooter drills it's distracting from our school life it's distracting from us just being trying to be american kids and live our own lives because we're turning our schools into war zones and when we add guns there i think we're just going to make it even worse even after we included all this new legislation 
we required training for all these teachers. We required psychological uh, checks to make sure that they're okay. And we made sure that they were well trained and had background checks. Why not just do that for every single person? I just want to point out, as a young woman, I, it always feels like you're living in a war zone. There's, there's nothing that you can't be oblivious to. Why a statement like that really should nullify any attempt or sentiment that would even broach the subject that she would have any credibility as someone who could be a leader because she's automatically going into her victim mentality altar and not because she was present during a school shooting but because she's supposedly a woman give me a break walking around in the world no emma you wrote something very moving in harper's bazaar you said my name is emma gonzalez i'm 18 years old cuban and bisexual i'm so indecisive that i can't pick a favorite color i'm a She's so indecisive that she can't pick a favorite color, and yet she's supposed to be the leader of a movement that is going to change American society as we know it. Brothers, once again, do you understand why they choose to utilize or use certain people as the faces of movements? Because they want there to be a trickle-down effect to all the other confused young girls. Yes, you deserve attention even though you don't know up from down. Those are her words, not mine. She doesn't even know what her favorite color is. She's confused by nature. She's confused about her sexuality. Once again, those are her words or, or her sentiments. Let me specify. And yet she's supposed to be leading a march on Washington, D.C. that is going to change the world. That is why the use of a teenager as an unwitting pawn is perfect because they have all the characteristics that you would need. They're looking for attention. They're looking to matter. And they want to show adults that they're not as inexperienced, they're not as dumb, they're not as naive as adults would state that they are. I'm allergic to 12 things, but none of this matters anymore. Were the two of you involved in student government before this happened? No, no. we were science buddies. <laughs> That's my point. Now you see what Gail King asked them. She asked them, were you involved in government? Because Gail King is assuming that they're t they've taken on this mantle of leadership that maybe they also had this mantle while in school. That's why, that's why I said, where are the political leaders? Where's the, where's the school president? How come he or she is not at the forefront of this movement? Why is everyone who is in the leadership position of the hashtag never again movement either an actor or someone who was associated with drama in some way or, or some form of media presentation? I don't want a reporter leading me anywhere. That's not your job. Most reporters, quite frankly, sensationalize their storylines so that they can get attention. Where are the people that are actually accustomed to administration? Hmm. To be honest, we're kind of we're kind of the nerds of the school. Um, I, I we're the last people that I would ever expect. Well, at least I am. Um, Emma's always been an amazing person. I think. <laughs> well, sir. Once again, if you're the last people that you would expect to be leading this movement, why are you leading it? How come you didn't find the school president or the people who were the official leaders in school to lead this movement? It's very obvious that this young lady here, Emma Gonzalez, has some type of a crush on this. The mayor of New York City, de Blasio, his wife is a so-called black woman who was a lesbian before she got with him. <laughs> Not to digress too much, but it's always amazing how the so-called white man can break that lesbian spell that is held over the so-called black and brown woman. Ain't that a bitch? Let me rewind it back. I would ever expect, well, at least I am. Um, Emma's always been an amazing person, I think. I, I, I even called her the day before the, sh the shooting. Um, to say what? Just to say, because I just finished up the documentary that I spent two months working on, and she, was, she played a heavy role in that. And I realized really what an amazing and dedicated person she is. And I just called her to tell her I didn't know what she was going to do next, but I knew it was going to change the world. But how did it come about the two of you, along with others, became leaders of this movement? Did Good question, Gail. Did you all get together? Did you all talk about it immediately? What happened? So here's what happened there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, got a, I got a text that, like... Well, we're, you know, the day of the rally, right? Yeah. So David's like, these guys are going to take us out to dinner. I'm like, all right. So they're like, we're going to pick up Cameron on the way. And I'm like, cool, Cameron Kasky, I know him. He was in Little Shop of Horrors. And yes, he was an actor. <laughs> we go pick him up. He's not wearing pants. And he was like, give me one second. And that was pretty much, that's the entire relationship with Cameron right there. It's like, usually, <laughs> none of us are usually wearing the right amount of clothes. You're talking, and which rally are you talking about, Emma? The rally where I gave the speech. Okay. And but but I mean, but how did it come about, though, that shortly after the shooting, that the two of you really became a voice of this? That's what I'm talking about. Now, you see, Gail sees that there's something rotten in Denmark as well. 
And did you see the rather silly story that this person, Emma Gonzalez, related when asked a serious question? That's exactly why teenagers are not supposed to be leading movements. Because they don't understand the world from a macrocosmic level yet. They have not experienced enough things. It's just a fact. This person, David Hogg, he's had training in regards to how to speak and how to present himself. That's clear. Once again, do I think that he's a quote-unquote crisis actor? No, I don't. But I do believe that he was a plant, that he was brought over and placed in that school for this event so that he could be brought to prominence. This is going to be used as a springboard for his own career. And very early on, you had that videotape. Yeah, I think the way that we really came about it. Yes, very early on, you had that videotape. That's what Gail King said. I'm not saying that. Gail King specified that. About as a voice, initially, the f even the day of the shooting, I, I went on the news and did a, I did a hit with 5 million people viewing live. Um, and then the next, within the next couple of days, I was supposed to be on Anderson, um, but the I was supposed to be on in again, and they didn't want me on there twice. So I called Emma, and I was like, hey, do you want to go on there? Hmm. And that's where she did her uh, first uh, live interview. Right, but David Hogg, why did you call Emma? Why didn't you call the class president? Someone who's normally accustomed to some form of leadership or representation or decision making. Why'd you call her? Emma, what's the most encouraging thing any politician has said to you? Said you? <laughs> um, actually, Ted Deutsch has been pretty cool. Um, and, you know, there, there have been some people on Twitter who are like, you know, keep, keep fighting out there, but they're not actually... And I know that I know that the wheels of bureaucracy turn very slowly, but they're not actually doing anything. At least that's what it feels like. And I feel like everybody needs to try harder. Like politicians need to step up their act. They you wrote, in, you wrote in your report, kids. You know, politicians are an easy whipping boy, but you have to understand politicians basically are like the bouncer at the club. It's not their job to help you get in the club. It's their job to really keep you out because they don't really have any power. Their job is just to basically tell the people what they feel like the people want to hear. That's why I tell you, brothers, you cannot look to a politician to assist the so-called black community. Politicians are like crops. that You have to grow them in your own field. You have to water them, meaning what? They have to be raised understanding what their job is going to be for the so-called black community. And then you put them in power, and if they don't do what you want, then you expose them. That's how all these other communities operate. That's why certain politicians do things for certain communities, because they know that if they don't, they, their file's going to be opened, they're going to be exposed. It's not the job of a community to ask a politician what they're going to do. It's the job of a community to tell a politician what they're going to do. I'm going to say it again. It's not the job of a community to ask a politician what they're going to do. It's the job of a community to tell a politician what they're going to do. And if not, they're going to be exposed, embarrassed, and totally disenfranchised. Kids are acting like adults, and adults are acting like kids. Mm -hmm. Because kids have, had become a dirty word. Like, you're acting like children. That's mm -hmm. offensive. It's to be called a child. And That's the new catchphrase now. When it, whenever anything is spoken that somebody doesn't like, they claim that it is quote-unquote offensive to try to shame you out of, out of speaking the truth. To be quite frank with you, this young lady here is very immature. That's, that's extremely obvious. Especially when you see how she responded to Gail King's very serious question. No, no, no one cares about the fact that you picked up your actor friend and he had no pants on. All that shows is that he's not really sincere either. They just, they're just able to deliver their lines very well. And, in fact, we've been raised in this school environment to, re, to, to show what an adult should be. We're being raised and we're being pushed into the real world so quickly. We never learned how to balance a checkbook. We learn how to balance a checkbook in fifth grade. So we're expected to know all this stuff when we leave high school just in case we don't make it to college. I think what's important to realize here is that the one thing that the NRA is trying to push right now is they're trying to make sure that we forget about this. They expect... Now did you see after she went on her little spiel, David Hogg understood that, okay, I have to reel her back in. That's how you know that she's just a prop. It's very important that they shine a the light on her because they understand that She's going to be an inspiration to many of the other sexually confused uh, young females out there that are looking for attention. Our generation to have a short attention span, and we are not going to let that happen, because the second that we forget about this, it can and it will be you. Which is one of the reasons why you delayed uh, the rally, the nationwide rally, for uh, this coming up Saturday. We've heard your voices loud and clear. What is your message to other 
high school students across the country who also are, are part of the mass shooting generation. I get think, out there and vote? Yeah, our message is vote? make sure that you get out there and vote. Make sure that you are registered to vote so you can vote in primaries and make sure that you stay educated for the rest of your life because the seeds of corruption and greed are always being sowed. It's our duty as a democracy to make sure that they don't sprout. And you're both getting death threats. Does that deter? That sounds like a nice little speech that he wrote right before the interview. And he was told after you get asked this question, you can deliver that line. Very well delivered. Let me rewind it back. That deter? I get out there and vote? Yeah, our message is vote? make sure that you get out there and vote. Make sure that you are registered to vote so you can vote in primaries. And make sure that you stay educated for the rest of your life. Because the seeds of corruption and greed are always being sowed. It's our duty as a democracy to make sure that they don't sprout. And you're both getting death threats. Does that deter you? No. 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 I don't, not at all. I'm going to get death threats at some point in their life, I feel. I agree with that. As long as you speak strong, certain people are going to threaten you. There's no doubt about that. I feel... Be it from a that's, stalker. That's how we know or, what we're doing matters. Yeah. People want to stop us. They're attacking we're, us personally because they can't find fault in our message. Because from Well, I could find fault in your message. That's not very difficult. If somebody wants to execute a mass shooting, they don't have to purchase a gun legally. As a matter of fact, you'll most likely find that uh, most of the mass shootings that will occur or can occur, it's not going to be very hard for them to get a, to get a gun. All they have to do is pay someone else to buy the gun for them. Or just steal one. It won't really be that difficult if someone truly wants to execute a mass shooting. What this truly is, is a very ingenious recalibration on their tactics to try to demonize the legal gun owners across America. What they've been doing is they've had many of their Manchurian candidates executing mass shootings amongst adults or even children. But then they would have adults be the ones that are protesting the legal gun ownership, particularly those who own machine guns. So what they did was they recalculated what a proper strategy would be to try to shame legal gun owners into relenting, giving up their guns. And they said, OK, well, maybe the next time we have a, a uh, Manchurian candidate execute a mass shooting, we can have kids lead the protest. Because what that would do is that may possibly shame the masses of America into agreeing with the sentiment that people should be disarmed. So it's very, very well thought out. Allegedly. That's, <laughs> that's just my view of it. And to me, it's not that difficult to figure out. Every single angle, the, everybody knows on a certain level that this is unacceptable. And it was never, it should never have happened. Like for 20 years, it should never have happened. A lot of people are listening to what you all have to say. Emma Gonzalez, David Hogg, thank you very much for coming to the table this morning. And then David, as you know, are among the student activists featured in the new CBS primetime documentary. It's called 39 Days. CBS News embedded with the students in the weeks after the Stoneman Douglas shooting as they turn their grief into action. The March for Our Lives in Washington will take place 39 days after the tragedy. And you can watch 39 Days Saturday, Saturday night at 9, 8 central, right here on CBS. Look, let me say this. It's very clear that this entire situation has been coordinated. Um, there's a reason why they choose to highlight the number 39. As I've already stated from the very beginning, and this goes all the way back to the video that I did on Valentine's Day. Once again, the Lupercalia is a day of very high resonance where you have to offer blood to Pan, a.k.a. the Baphomet as he's known today. In the ancient world... When they celebrate the Lupercalia, they had to sacrifice human beings on Mount Lycopolis. Also, if you notice, and I'm, I may have mentioned this already, this year the Lupercalia fell on what they call Ash Wednesday, in which the people who go to the Catholic Church, they get the, the cross put on their foreheads for Tammuz. Please understand that people weep for 40 days for Tammuz which is why you see that number 39, right? Of course, the 40th day represents the completion of the weeping for Tammuz. But anyway, we'll see where this goes. I'm sure that this narrative is not going to come to an end anytime soon. They are going to ratchet it up. But anyway, peace.